right, so we are in Lancaster. We came last night. It is bitter, bitter cold, cold. here. Cold, extremely cold. Yes. Yeah. You can see all the icicles forming outside the RV, so yep. crazy. Really quickly, guys, today we're talking about cameras, and we just wanted to let you know that um, everything that we talk about, there's a link in our description if you want to buy on Amazon through our site. Yeah. And also stay tuned till the end because we're going to be talking about the live stream that we're going to do next Monday, the 28th at 6 p.m. Yeah, so it's going to be fun. Let's go into today's video. Back inside. One of the questions we get asked very frequently is what equipment do we use when we are filming our videos? Yes. So Eli is going to tell you three cameras. Yeah, well, four if you count the drones, but three. Okay. We mainly use three cameras here. Yep. Three cameras that we use, and then we're going to give you five tips on getting started or filming. Or making better videos. Making better videos. All right, what's the first camera? So the first camera is a GoPro camera. Um, here we have this one, <laughs> my beautiful model here to show you. <laughs> here I have it on this little tripod, um, which uh, is great because sometimes we put it like in the back of the truck, on a picnic table at the campground, and also have this little housing for the audio attachment. And in here we put a little microphone. I'm going to show you images of a microphone because we are using it right now here to record the video. But this GoPro camera is the workhorse of RV East Coast. You see it so much. You see this camera in so many positions, in top of the truck, on side of the trailer, underneath the trailer. Underwater. In, underwater, jet skis, uh, in the golf cart. Sometimes we attach two of these to a golf cart to do uh, our interviews. One of the things that I like about this tiny camera is that it makes our channel so much more dynamic because um, you get so many variety of shots that help you drive the story and keep it always visually interesting so we are not like great on camera on talking on camera but these little cameras are um, really amazing to keep the channel uh, energetic and entertaining hey everybody i wanted to make a quick clarification what we have is the GoPro Hero 7. Now, there are two newer GoPros in the market, the Hero 8 and the Hero 9. I highly recommend the Hero 9 <coughs> because um, it has a, a much smaller fo footprint. You can um, adapt a microphone uh, straight to the camera on the side so you don't need to have this giant bulky thing like we have the reason why we continue to use this one is because it works um, and there is no need to spend more money um, just to have the new camera when this one is working just fine so if you are trying to buy a new gopro and you don't have one i will go for the gopro hero 9. the tiny microphone that goes on the side is about 79 dollars it's a little bit pricey but I will pay that extra money to have a much smaller footprint, much smaller camera, instead of this gigantic thing that takes the discrete uh, aspect uh, of this camera away. All right, back to the video. And is it easy to use? It's extremely easy to use. You don't have to learn, uh, you don't have to know anything about photography, like aperture, shorter speed, uh, shorter speed. You don't need to know anything. You just turn it on, hit record and and it's good to go one thing i really like about this camera is that you don't even need to turn it on and then start recording sometimes if a good moment happens and you want to capture it you just hit record the camera is gonna power on and start recording right away and sometimes you we can voice activate it right yeah uh sometimes we we put it on a like mounted on a golf cart or, or or in a corner of the truck and you can just talk to the camera GoPro start recording GoPro stop recording and yeah sometimes when we use it um, on the side on top of the trailer you can also control it with your phone so GoPro is like the saving grace yeah. <laughs> of and our beast coast just so you know um, we lost this one <coughs> at the beach Mm -hmm. And um, Eli put a sticker on it with his name, his uh, our website on it. 
and the person found our website contacted us let us know uh, I mean they're not super expensive right they're a couple hundred yeah a few hundred dollars um, but that was a good little tip because <coughs> this is tiny and you know we thought we would never get it back but we did yeah I have so much gear and what she was saying I, I put a little sticker on everything I own um, and if it gets lost people yeah. usually there there are good people out good there people right out there yes okay so go for it what's next all right the next camera that we have been using a lot and is amazing this is a DJI pocket 2 this camera lives in our truck it just stays there the whole time I try to keep it always charged because you never know uh, when, when you're gonna come across something interesting uh, when we go on adventures I just keep it in my pocket because it's pretty small but um, let me get it out and turn it on but this little camera it's also amazing look at how small it is and the footage from this camera and the GoPro that we just show you it's almost identical it's almost the same the difference the big difference between these two is that this one is already mounted on a gimbal uh, so you're gonna get that nice uh, smooth footage uh, when we do campground reviews and you see uh, when we show you around all the sites and everything it's usually usually this little camera the other thing I really like about this camera is the audio it has really good audio and often most of the uh, talking to the camera um, action that you see in the channel we don't wear uh, a lavalier microphone it's just straight from this little thing so this little camera it's amazing the downside to this one is no waterproof I mean those GoPro cameras you can throw them in the fire <laughs> you can do whatever you want with them because they're really rugged and tough it's a great little camera very easy to use do you find it easy to use yeah I've only used it once but um, it was easy to use so yeah, sure. in your long career as a filmmaker um, it has been good right yes I love it it's <laughs> wonderful it's, it's perfect all right and the third one okay that we use the most often this is um this is my favorite camera for blogging it's a little bit more advanced more complicated this is a canon eos r here i have a tamron 24 to 70 millimeters this is more for people that have a little bit more knowledge about either photography or video it's a little bit more advanced um, we also put the same microphone we put on the GoPro we put it here and this camera gives you really beautiful uh, footage but it's a little bit takes a little longer to learn how to use it but um, this camera usually we see it we use it when maybe we want to make a video that is visually a little bit aver uh, above our average review or when we are going to a campground that is really special um, it can shoot a beautiful slow motion I usually shoot all of the what? <laughs> no, I usually shoot all the b-roll all the um, images that you see the kids playing the just beautiful little details around the campground at 60 frames per second that's um, slow motion if this is too complicated for you maybe I don't know Maybe I can make a video about explaining how I set up this camera. But yeah, this is uh, this is for when we want to make it look a little extra special, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so those are the three cameras. Um, but you said we also use a drone sometimes. Yeah, we do have a small DJI drone. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get into talking much about drones because that's a whole different world. And there are so many videos out there. Pretty much any DJI drone that you buy is gonna be good enough for a YouTube channel okay mm -hmm. all right all those right. are the cameras we use yes. after all of your questions over and over that that is that's it that's what we use yes okay so now let's talk about a few tips just to help people out there um, like most of you that watch your channel know that Eli does this for his profession he's a filmmaker um, so just some tips from a professional to kind of help you with your videos um, so the first one is I'm a, we should say that I am a professional 
documentary, commercial filmmaker, that means that I am great behind the camera. But this whole YouTube channel has been a learning experience for both of us. And you yes. know, being in front of the camera is another thing and we are still getting better. So first tip is plan what you're going to shoot because if you're shooting everything, it's overwhelming in the editing process. Yes. So keep this in mind. Uh, when, when you start a channel and you start making your videos, you realize how difficult it is to edit. And it's because you realize <laughs> it's because you realize how much footage you shot. Keep this in mind. Let's say you go on a four day trip and you want to capture everything. Every time you hit the record button, that's one clip that you're going to have to watch. You're going to have to cut. You're going to have to find the best moment. And if you have too much, it's going to be overwhelming. So make a little mental plan of what moments or what parts of your trip are the most important or relevant and then be more active during those moments but don't don't be a happy trigger don't be shooting 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 yeah. all the time yeah okay tip number two oh. okay change up locations and footage because it gets boring if it's on one scene for too long yeah so if you have a channel like hours where um a lot of our content is us talking about the places that we visit or about the gear we use if you're just talking on camera the whole time it's it's boring it's yeah. slow and uh, especially if you have like a sexy dominican accent like me that um, it's a little hard to understand uh, so sometimes uh to have visual images of of what you're talking about helps so get that b-roll and if you have a long story or something you're going to be talking for a while start in one location then continue at another location and then um, you change it up and the video is going to be a little bit more uh, dynamic and it's going to feel like the story is progressing just not staying at the same place the whole time yeah our third tip which i can talk a little bit about this one is don't be shy <laughs> so um i think when we got started like i i am very shy i don't really like being on camera i think some people noticed that in the beginning um <laughs> but you know and even when eli would set up a camera if other people were around i'd be like put it away i don't want you know, but it's more interesting if you are comfortable with the camera, if you're just kind of, um, what's the word, like uh, engaging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So don't be shy, have fun with it. And at the end of the day, like, who cares, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, and also it's sort of like everything has a price, you know? And if you want to be a, a content creator, that's, that's one of the prices you have to pay. You have to, well, someone is looking at you, well, whatever. You never see that person again. And also what, what we have discovered is that when you make it normal, then it's fine. You have seen in this channel when I am talking with you and someone walks by and I just turn, turn around and say hi and then continue to talk with you. So just start, try as best as you can to feel comfortable. I'm familiar with the camera. Yeah. <laughs> we are not there yet, but we are trying. Right? We're trying. We're getting better. <laughs> if you go back and look at our first videos, I think we've gotten a lot better. Uh, I can't even tell me. About it. <laughs> All right. Our fourth tip is mix the media. So, um, it doesn't have to be all high production shots. As you saw from our camera equipment, not everything we use is professional equipment. Yeah. And sometimes we even record things on our cell phones if we don't have the camera right there. Yeah. What we do is that we keep a balance. For instance, if we do a portion of the video where it's just us talking with this little camera, then I try to complement that with some beautiful footage that I maybe shot with our main camera. That way, you kind of like distribute the quality. A little bit of lower quality stuff with this shaky little camera, and then a little bit of something more cinematic on the next portion of the video. And this is nice too because, um, you know, again, going back to the shy thing, 
If you are a little mm -hmm. shy and you're out in public, nobody really wants to be like filming everybody with that big thing. And this is very discreet. So even when Eli asks me to do something, I don't feel uncomfortable. You know, I can just kind of, nobody knows what I'm doing. So that's yeah. Fine. And this one, some people don't even know that this is a camera. I mean, it's so small. And if you cover it with your hand, this is all you see. So if you, if we are, let's say, a uh, an amusement park or anything you just get it out you record hey guys we're doing this we're doing that and it's just very easy and discreet yeah all right and our final tip is don't let the filming consume the fun you yeah. know this you know we got started filming because mm -hmm. this is something that you do but because our reading is something that that we've really enjoyed and bonded with as a family yeah um but if we're so wrapped up in like getting the shots and get, then we're not having fun so yeah. don't let it become your main priority. Let the trip be your main priority. Yeah, don't overwhelm your family um, <laughs> with uh, with filming. I maybe have been guilty of that. You know, I think as a documentary filmmaker, I try to make sure I cover everything, that I have footage of everything. But um, lately I have learned that I Capture little moments. If I see that something a lot of fun is happening, maybe I'll get the camera out. But sometimes I just decide to enjoy the moment with the family and be present and, and enjoy it. I will put it this way. It makes no point if you are creating content and the people watching it are enjoying it if you didn't enjoy it. Right. Number one, you're going to get burned out you're gonna stop creating content. And number two, it's not gonna be authentic. If you're having fun, you can see it on your face, your energy, the way you talk. So have fun with it. Yeah. All right, so that's our video for today. We do have something fun to announce for next week. Mm -hmm. um, we are, you know, because it's we're not RVing and traveling as much, we're doing some random stuff. So we're gonna do a live stream next week. Um, but we do want you to send us some questions now because um, we want to kind of have an idea an I yeah, idea of what you guys want to know from us. Um, so send us your questions because I believe it's Monday the 20... I am not time oriented at all. <laughs> that we're going to do, um, instead of a video, we're going to do a live stream and we'll answer questions and we hope you join us there. Look, look what's happening. You always do that. You see? We start in the middle and look where your mic is at and we are on this side of the frame. Bye! So in Christmas style.